today, I'm going to talk to you somewhat about end time signs. End time signs. This gives us an understanding of the prophetic timeline and also the clues, the signs, the seasons, the elements along the way. Now, no man, as the scripture says, knows the day or the hour that Jesus will return. But the Bible does supply us with a number of signs in which we're able to tell. Look, you go outside and you feel a cold breeze <laughs> coming through. No, no, let me take us. You know, one thing I notice, anytime there's a rainstorm comes through there, I found out that they blow in and then they blow out. So you'll see the wind coming through the trees and whatnot and rustling and whatnot. And then this front comes along, you know, weather front. And then the rain hits and then it leaves. And even on its way out, it's still sort of blowing behind it because there seems to be like a circular circulation of the wind as it comes in and goes out. Amen. Well, I want to tell you there are signs, Jesus said, in the heaven and in the earth that we can know and tell the season that his return is imminent. With that said, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you. Thank you for your goodness, mercy, grace, and compassion. And thank you for Jesus, for his precious blood, for your holy written word, and for the mighty Holy Spirit. Thank you, O oh God, for protecting, preserving, sustaining, and keeping us. Thank you for upholding us with your righteous right hand. God, we deposit this service into your charge for safekeeping. We thank you in advance for anointing every ear, mind, heart, and soul to receive the engrafted word. And we're careful, O oh God, to give you and you alone all the praise, the honor, and the glory with adoration and thanksgiving. Father, we welcome the supernatural of God to be in manifestation even as the Spirit wills. I declare and decree, Lord, there is neither time nor distance in the realm of the Spirit. And so, Father, not by might or power, but by your Spirit, I declare, O oh God, that the manifestations, illuminations, revelations, and demonstrations of your Holy Spirit will be made manifest even as you will in the various homes, the various locales, that anyone watching this live stream, God, that power will move in there and it will pour out upon them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, to their fingertips and to the tips of their toes. And we believe that we receive these petitions which we desire of you. For we ask them in that mighty, matchless and majestic name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, thank you for anointing this vessel of clay to minister life to your people boldly without fear, favor, or respect of persons, that your word may proceed as it does from your own mouth. It will not, it will not return to you void, but it will accomplish that which you please and prosper in the thing whereunto it is sent. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you know, I've been teaching from this particular passage for a bit here, there, and so forth, here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept, but I want to get into it a little bit further in depth. So turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 24, because we want to hear from Jesus. You know, looking at all the things that have been occurring in the past year, and to be honest with you, some of those things are probably going to carry themselves over into this new year, and we need some understanding and some insight, and it can come from a better person than the Lord Jesus himself. So in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, reading into it, in fact, let me go to the first verse. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. You know, people are impressed with things like that. Uh, I'm not making it right or wrong. I'm just saying people are impressed. And the disciples, you know, look, look at all this stuff, Jesus, in this, in this powerful, in this great... Uh, and Jesus said, "See." And Jesus said to them, "See you not all these things, all these things. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down." All right. Now that's very indicative because it doesn't say he didn't say they're just going to fall down. He didn't say there's an earthquake coming going to shake all this down. He said specifically they'll be thrown down. So there will be, shall I say, external forces that are involved in the deconstruction of these facilities that these guys are excited about. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Now, let me pause there a minute, and we'll go through the rest of this passage. 
there are two very critical elements associated with the times in which we're living. I'm talking about right now. We're here now on what? This is the third day of January, all right, 2021. Praise God. Uh, two definite critical elements that are surely signs of the end times. Number one is deception, all right? Deception. And then the second one is the deterioration of human character, all right? The deterioration of human character. Deception and the deterioration of human character. Now, th these are absolute running partners here, all right? Deception and the deterioration of human character. I mean, these are Bobsy twins if there ever were some twins. They might be fraternal. You know, they're not exactly identical, but they work really hand in hand together. Deception and the deterioration of human character. The, the lack or the slack or the loss of integrity of character. Either people have character or they are a character, you know? And then deception, first of all, let me just tell you, anybody that's denying their vulnerability to deception is already deceived. Uh, it's sad to say, but we're all prone or subject to or susceptible to or vulnerable to deception. This is why Jesus is giving this warning. See, I've discovered in the scripture that wherever the Lord gives an admonition, a warning. He's saying, look, you know, watch out for this, watch out for that. Thou shalt not this, thou shalt not that. He is really putting out a word of protection because those are the areas in which we are tempted. You know, the Bible talks about in, in John's epistle, 1 John, uh, the second chapter, he says, now the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Those are the three critical vulnerabilities that we have. Those, I call it the three fold sphere of temptation. So wherever you see an admonition or a warning in the scripture, Jesus is saying, watch out because here's an area in which you are susceptible to temptation. And let me tell you something here. All humans are tempted. I don't care at any level. All right. Leadership level, whether it's the leaders of nations, whether it's governors of states, whether it is the mayors and other people that oversee the various local municipalities. It could be anyone in any industry, at any place, at any time. All humans are tempted. Now, it's not a sin to be tempted. It becomes a sin when you yield to a temptation that is luring you into evil, wicked, and wrongdoing, okay, that you know is going against the word of God. And I want to tell you, in our world today, there is a whole lot of that going on. You see, on God's prophetic timeline, I can't tell you the day or the hour. I told you no man knows that. But apparently, there is. I, I kind of get the vision of this cup or a vessel, if you will. And there's something pouring into it. And it's called iniquity. All right? And, and, and after a season, after a while, man, that cup or that vessel... Being, having iniquity poured into it, all this stuff that we're doing that we shouldn't be doing, or things that we're not doing that we should be doing, this cup is going to overflow or this vessel is going to overflow. You understand? It's going to get to something, what they call the tipping point. Amen. And that is definitely on the prophetic timeline. So I, I'm, I'm saying to you, every place that Jesus gives an admonition or a warning, he's saying, be careful. This is an area that you're susceptible to be tempted. Now, as I said, being tempted is not a sin. You know, you can see something that you want doesn't belong to you, and you say, man, I really like to have that. And as long as you don't go over there and grab what doesn't belong to you and take it for yourself, you know, at the expense of the other person that it belongs to, it's okay. You know, you might say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to take that. Or, you know, let me, let, me, let me be a little more mild for just a second. <laughs> you know, some of you are really trying to, you know, get away from things you don't really need to be eating and whatnot, and you know, you walk by a place and that aroma just comes in there. Man, I got to just stop and go in here and buy a piece of cake or pie. Or I got to go in here and get me a burger or something like that. And you know, you don't need it. Look, it's, it's a temptation. Now, now, I'm not saying it's a sin for you to go in there and, and get a sample of the goods or something like that. that. That's a different setting and a different context. But I'm just trying to illustrate to you so you can clearly understand the way temptation and deceptions work. All right. So, you know, you, you can think it, but see, you have to be careful now. You have to be careful because you don't want your mind to move over into what I call forbidden territory. 
All right? All right, let's move on with what Jesus is saying. Now, here he says, he said, the first thing he says, in answer, in response to their question, and I like this because Jesus didn't put them off. He gave them a direct answer. He said, look, first, see that no man deceive you. He said, many, this is, this is incredible, many shall come in my name. But it's credible because Jesus is saying it. You have the truth telling you the truth. Many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. He said, it's not a chance of it happening. He said, he's gonna, they're going to do it. They're going to deceive people. And you shall hear of wars. Are we not hearing of wars? And rumors of wars. Are we not hearing about rumors of wars? <laughs> See that you be not troubled. Let not your heart be troubled, Jesus is saying to you. This is very, very important. And the reason why I tell you, do not take a steady diet of what's coming out of the media. Listen, let me tell you something. First of all, thank God we're getting into this period of, of prayer with fasting because in the course of our fast, part of the protocol of our fasting regimen is to limit television viewing to uh, a maximum of three hours per day, okay? A maximum of three hours per day. Now, you know, it's just wisdom. People want to know what's going on, keep up with certain things. We understand that. Children may have to look at things for assignments or whatever, but I'm just saying... It's challenging now because, see, you can carry your TV with you everywhere you go. See this cell phone? See this tablet? Listen, they're all perfectly capable. Listen, you're streaming. people. There's a, a zillion <laughs> channels to stream, okay? So it, this, this is a part of that protocol also, all right? Maximum three hours of television viewing. It, I don't care what device that you're using. Now, I'm not telling you don't use the phone for telephone calls or in the course of business where you have to browse and find different things on websites or keep up with information, and, and you're utilizing these electronic devices as tools in the course of your vocations and occupations. I, I don't mean that. Okay, if the children are going back to school and they're going to be virtual, obviously they're going to be utilizing this equipment. So let's rightly divide what's going on. Let's not strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Amen. So, But again, a maximum of three hours of general general television viewing time. In other words, you know, because some of you, man, these shows, they got binges, they got, what do they call it, marathons, <laughs> 24 hours, 48 hours of this series, of that show, of this movie. Oh, my goodness. So you got to be careful of it. They especially hit us on the holidays with that. And I know we'll be glad we're, we're heading toward this other election situation. And, uh, man, we'll be glad when that's behind us because TVs have been inundated with ads. That's all I'll say about that. Now, back to what Jesus is saying. So he says, many shall come in my name, saying I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and see that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. There's no chance that they're not going to happen. He said, these things are coming to pass. They must come to pass, but the end is not yet. As bad as things were in the previous year, and there's probably some other, you know, shall I say, choppy water ahead, some headwinds ahead, some rough patches ahead, Okay, he said they must come to pass, but the end is not yet. All right, so don't get nervous. Don't get upset. You know, don't set up your telescopes looking for Jesus to break the eastern sky just yet, so forth and so on. Now, he said, for nation shall rise against nation. Now, nations have been doing this for quite some time, but Jesus is speaking of something to come that's going to be extraordinary compared to what we have witnessed over time. We've been through all kinds of wars. We've been through the Revolutionary War. We've been through the Civil War. We've been through the French Indian War. We've been through the War of 1812. We've been through World Wars One and Two. We've been through the Korean War, the Vietnamese War, or Vietnam War. We've been through two Gulf Wars. We still keep fighting. Nation is what? Rising against nation. Now, you have to remember another thing to put things into context. The scripture says that to the Lord, a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. So, see, based on God's timing elements, you can't just narrow it down and say, okay, one, two, three, four, five, we've had this many wars, and this. but you know what? There's been wars going on in other parts of the world as well, and it talks about nation rising against nation. Well, that's going to be par for the course. It's going to continue to happen according to what Jesus is saying, all right? And so he said there shall be famines, people starving, and, uh, and pestilences, disease, 
like these viruses and things like that. And he said earthquakes in diverse places. Listen, we've seen all of these elements happening in different parts of the world at different times. We've seen famines in different places. We have definitely seen disease and pestilence invade and affect different populations and countries and peoples, ethnic groups and so forth and so on. Earthquakes in diverse places. Look, we have earthquakes here in the U.S. There's earthquake. We just had some earthquakes in the news not too long ago. They're continually happening. They're continually happening. These events are continually happening. And so Jesus is saying, pay attention to these things because these are signs in answer to the request of the disciples. When is the end and when are you coming back and so forth? And he said, all these, verse 8, are the beginning of sorrows. Then, he said, shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now listen, I know nobody really wants to hear this, but you got to hear this because this is Jesus speaking. All right. We're seeing this. This is happening in our world today. It may not have flooded the entire world at this point, but Jesus said a sure sign, a sure sign of the end are these things and you will be able to observe them. He said, they'll deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. There are nations around the world that are literally finding followers of Jesus and afflicting them. And in some cases, they are annihilating them, okay? You talk about persecution. Man, that's more like execution, okay? And I'm talking about people that follow Jesus. Some of these nations, they don't want anything to do with Jesus. They don't want anything to do with God. They don't want anything to do with the truth of God's word. You see, this is the quest that sadly got started at the Garden of Eden and has been going ever since, that man is determined to become his own God. There's a nation on the earth right now that is telling, listen, telling the people, listen, you cannot worship God the way you want to worship God. We will let you come to your church building. and Listen now, this is true. This is 2021. You can come to your church building, but you guys who've been running this, you know, the pastors and the deacons and, the, and all that and the ministers in church, you're going to train these folks to pledge allegiance and, and dedication and loyalty only to the state, not to Jesus, not to God, but to the state. This is today. This is happening now. It may be somewhere else. We hope it'll never find its way here, but it is happening, and Jesus said it was. See, don't lose sight of the fact that the Scripture, <laughs> hallelujah, this is a, shall I say it, a Middle Eastern book. Now, it is a book about a king and his kingdom, and a country called heaven, all right? But it started, it started in the Middle East, amen. And so there's a lot of things you read in here that may be a little bit out of the setting that we are accustomed to being what we call a, a democratic republic, okay, as the United States of America. Different countries have different forms of government. Some are parliamentary, others there's still a few monarchies around, and there's a socialist governments, communist governments, there's all kinds of governments. The greatest government I teach about is self-government based on the word of God, all right? But, but you, this, is, this is stuff that's going on right now. You've probably seen it in some of the media reports about, you know, disturbances and troubling situations going on in different parts of the world. And you see people literally desperately fleeing for their lives. International terrorists were threatening people who would not uh, avow their allegiance to their quote, religion. They said, look, you either convert to what we believe in or you get out of here and listen, don't take a thing with you. We're taking over your home. We're taking over everything that belongs to you. You better get out of here and hope we don't gun you down. This is real. This is happening. Jesus said, this is a part of what you'll see as we move along God's prophetic timeline. Now, I know believers struggle with this. They said, well, couldn't God just step in there and do something about it? Well, sure he could. But you see, here's the thing. That's an entirely different teaching. You know, God can do anything but fail, lie, and deny himself, okay? But that's, that's another subject for another time. Let, let's, let's focus on these end time signs here, all right? So Jesus said, all these are the beginning of sorrows. 
But this is the thing. He said, you shall be hated, the latter part of verse 9. You shall be hated of all nations. Oh, my goodness, for my name's sake. You shall be hated of all nations. Now, it doesn't matter about your ethnicity. He said, you shall be hated of all nations. And when I say the word nations, it really speaks of the word the Greek ethnos. So all kinds of different people. He said, you shall be hated. He's talking about the folks that follow him. The people that are loyal and allegiant to God will be hated by all nations. I wish it didn't say all, and so do you. You, you, you would hope maybe some, maybe a few, maybe a handful. No, all of them. You will be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended. We're seeing that. And shall betray one another. We're seeing that too. And shall hate one another. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> some of that is playing out right here, right now, in our country, in other countries. The, the, listen, the vitriol, the anger, the hate, the negative discharge, the name-calling, the absolute wickedness and evil speaking that is going on is beyond anything we've seen. And I tell you what, social media is just amplifying it to an exponential level. It's difficult now for you to take your little children and say, now, do you see that person there in that position of leadership? Do you see this person that's in charge of this and in charge of that? Well, you know, there's a good example of a leader. It's difficult to point that out almost anymore. The only one, see, this is why all these nations are going to hate us, because there's only going to be one somebody left. Well, there's always only been one somebody to whom you can really point to and say, that's who you want to be like, and that person is Jesus of Nazareth. He's the one you want to be like. Remember Ephesians 5, 1, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children or be imitators of God. Yeah, yeah. See, he's the one. He's really right now the only one we can point to and say, he's the one that you want to be like when you grow up or so forth and so on. He's the one you want to mimic. He's the one that you want to model after in order to run your business, in order to manage your household, uh, in order to serve the people in government. That is to say, you are a government leader, a civil leader, and this is, the, this is the example you follow in order to carry out and serve leadership to your constituency. The constituency isn't there to serve you. You're there in a capacity of leadership to serve the constituency. And you should not deal with them treacherously or deceitfully. And yet all of these things are going on right now in real time. All right? So... Then he goes on, verse 11, and many, oh man, there's that word again, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Didn't say they're going to be lifted up, said they'll rise. It's the difference between being lifted up and then being and, and then rising up. And that, that's the problem with these false folks. They just rise up, come up out of nowhere, and shall deceive many. There's a whole lot of folks being deceived. You, you know, it, it, part of this message has to do with how to avoid being deceived. But as I said, my caution to you is this, never think you're invulnerable to deception. Because if you think that and you begin to believe that, you're already deceived, amen? And see, humility is one of the greatest, shall I say, virtues that you will need that can help you and protect you from such deception. Now, Jesus goes on, verse 12, because iniquity, shall abound. Mm. My, 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 my. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now that's old English meaning grow. I want to read that from the Amplified Translation. And the love of the great body of people will grow cold because of the multiplied lawlessness and iniquity. You know, we're seeing that in a measure right now. Now, I, don't, I wouldn't want to say, I wouldn't say exactly that it's boiled over yet or that it's blown out the, uh, the pressure cooker. But listen, this lawlessness, this rioting and carrying on out here, people who would otherwise normally live at peace with each other, whatnot, they're not tolerating that. Their love, the Bible says, is going to grow cold, man, because why? Because it says they're because of the multiplied lawlessness and iniquity. People just keep doing wrong, calling good evil and calling evil good. He said, the love of many shall wax cold. But he, here it is, 
that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now, Jesus is not going to put a word out there that doesn't have an element of hope connected with it. There is hope. Now, it says they shall deceive many. We see that of the false prophets. We see that of the nations. But he didn't say all. Everybody won't be deceived. Many will be deceived, but not everyone. All right, notice that. Very, very important. You hold fast to that and count yourself in that number. All right, don't be a part of the many that are deceived by these false teachers, prophets, and preachers, and whatnot, and, and the nations when, when the, the love of many shall wax cold. Amen, amen. All right, praise God. It says the love of many shall wax cold, not everyone. Oh, that's why we always keep hope alive. Amen? Everybody's not going to fall for this stuff. Everybody's not going to be caught up in this. Amen? He said many, not all. Remember that. Praise God. He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. The gospel is still going forth. There are brave and courageous souls missionaries, preachers, teachers, men and women of God all over this world, continuing to preach the gospel, continuing to carry the good news in every corner of the world as God gives them breath. And many of them at the risk of their very lives and limbs, all right? I've seen stories of some of these people being hacked to death in certain points in the world or being killed or their places being set on fire and, and all kinds of... Uh, atrocities and crimes against humanity. This is the season. This is what Jesus called the beginning of sorrows. All right? When you, verse 15, therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet. See, I told you we tie in the prophetic timeline. Jesus is now making reference to one of the Old Testament prophets, and even though Daniel served in the government, several governments come to think of it. He was serving under Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, and then Darius the Mede. And so Daniel was all in the middle of the governmental activities and operations of three empires, or I should say two empires, the Babylonians and then the Medes and the Persians. All that's over there in the Middle East. You know, what, what is today, uh, Babylonian <laughs> is what is today's modern day Iraq. Amen. So all that's happening. All this came out of the Middle East, as it were, okay? Forget about the contemporary Middle East. I'm just making a historical reference, but still, it has a huge role today. A lot of what's going on over there and what is about to happen over there is consequential, really, to the rest of the world. It really is. All right. So, uh, yes, he said, When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, Stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Uh, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Man, there's an event that's going to happen. And, of course, this is making a reference towards the Antichrist and him setting up his one world government. And basically, for all practical purposes, he's setting himself up to be God and is going to command and demand the worship of the whole world toward him. And those that don't worship him, well, he's going to make war with them. Now, I'm, I'm really getting ahead of myself, and I'm really, you know, making a bullet point out of this. But this, these are the things that, that are about to happen. Now, you know, maybe some, some people are listening to me teach this and minister this, and I'm just, look, I'm just reading verse by verse of what Jesus said. And, and see, just the fact that Jesus says this, and, and the first thing he said is, see that nobody deceive you. And then the second thing he says is, see that you be not troubled. Don't get nervous. But these are things you need to know and recognize. See, it's funny, when I think about, as Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah and the days of Lot, Sodom and Gomorrah, do you realize there were real people living then? Don't know exactly what the populations of them was. Maybe they were millions. Maybe there were hundreds of thousands. But, the, I mean, those were real people. A real population existed at the time that God called Noah to build the ark. God instructed Noah, I want you to preach righteousness for 120 years. And Noah, you know, obeyed God. He was preaching, and I guess he was working on the, the ark all at the same time. He was kind of bivocational, you know, preaching and working, preaching and building. 
it may, I, get, I get the impression that he was overseeing other people that were building that boat. But nevertheless, that's what happened. And you know what? I don't know how many people paid attention to him because the only folks that escaped were him, his wife, and his three sons and their wives. That was it. All the rest of them were left out there on earth. And the rain came. And as a f famous comedian said, man, and the sewers backed up. <laughs> Amen. Well, I don't know about that. I know one thing. The whole earth was covered with water, and the only thing on it with any people living was the ark. And the ark was out there floating on that water for, for a number of months before it rested in the mountains of Ararat. And after that, the animals on board, Noah and all his family exited the ark, and God had, you know, humanity cranked up all over again, so to speak. But that was a real event. It really did happen. It really happened. The Bible says that it happened. And, and you see, the thing is, what were the people doing? Why didn't they take Noah seriously? They don't take us preachers seriously either. A lot of people don't. They just think, oh, we're just Bible thumpers. Oh, they're just trying to cram the Bible down your throat. Oh, these are killjoys. They're trying to stop us from having fun and enjoying our lives. We don't need them to come around and tell us what we're doing, what we don't need to do, and so forth. God said, show my people their sin. Okay? But, but they, you know, listen, Paul said to Timothy, he said, look, you know what? The day is coming. And I declare to you, that day is here, where they will not be able to endure sound doctrine. They will not. They will not endure sound doctrine. They will refuse. They will refute. They will rebuke. They're doing it right now. And they're doing the same things that many empires and kings and people before our time did. They wanted to set themselves up as the supreme this and the supreme that. And God had to come along and say, no, you're not the supreme this and the supreme that. See, God is reserved for himself, and the scripture reveals it. He sets up kingdoms, and he can also bring kingdoms down. So any government that exists, God has reserved by sovereignty, by divine decree, the, the right to bring it up and to take it down. There's this passage of scripture that says that God can put in a government the basest of men. And certainly, biblical history shows that. There have been good kings, bad kings, and in our modern and contemporary times, we've seen good leaders and bad leaders, all right? So, let them, verse 16, which be in Judea, flee to the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. <laughs> He's saying, you better be on the roll. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. That's a tough time. That's a tough time, a great tribulation. Jesus is speaking here, all right? We're almost finished with this passage. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Oh, hallelujah. I told you, Jesus brings a word. He's going he's gonna to bring hope with it. There's, there's hope in that verse right there. I'm going to read that again. Except that those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Oh, my goodness. But for the elect's sake, for God's people's sake, those days shall be shortened. In other words, those days would be extended Nobody would survive. But Jesus said, hey, for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. And don't tell me that God can't shorten them. Look, if he can turn the sundial back a few degrees, it's no problem for him to shorten days. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then, if any man shall say unto you, lo, there is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets. He is repeating this thing. And shall show, watch this, great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Let me read that verse again. There shall arise, all right? There shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And, and then verse 25, behold, I've told you before. This is Jesus. 
We're talking about end time signs. And we as the people of God, we need to understand these things because as they look in contemporary times, you may not recognize these signs. You may not recognize these seasons. You may not recognize them because they come through the channels that they do. They come through the networks. They come through the media. They come through political discourse. They come through business and economic discourse. They, they come through the exchanges between people and nations and so forth and so on. And you may not recognize them as what Jesus is saying here and now. Look, th th these false people are operating now. They are deceiving elect. They are deceiving many, as Jesus said. Thank God he didn't say all. But that is actually and literally happening now, okay? So Jesus provided distinct warnings against deception by false manifestations as well as the false prophets and people. He said not, not only the folks involved, like the prophets, false teachers, so forth, but also so-called demonstrations or manifestations, false signs and wonders. See, people don't realize the devil still can perform signs and wonders. He, he's been doing it. He's still doing it. You, you, you can drive up and down different streets and you'll see his agencies. They have field offices out there. You see a big giant hand out in the front palm, you know, uh, a big cr crystal ball image or whatever. And, and listen, those are people trafficking with familiar spirits. Those are not spirits of God. Those are people, listen, that are called spiritist mediums. Spiritist, not spiritual, spiritist mediums. And they traffic with familiar spirits. In other words, the devil uses them. Unclean spirits and demonic spirits use them. Lying spirits, false spirits, evil and wicked spirits use them. So, you know, all this that Jesus is saying, if you think this is for a thousand years down the road, no, nope, it's 2021. And to be honest with you, much of this has been building and building and building and developing over the past who knows how many years. Are you listening to me? Really, it's been rolling ever since the Garden of Eden, the fall in the garden. That was the beginning of it all. And all it did was amplify, develop, and evolve from that one point. Once man, you know, declared himself independent of God, which essentially was what Adam did, because in sinning, he, listen, in dying, he did in fact die or separate himself from God. That's what separates us all from God, sin. That's why the scripture says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory. But thank God for Jesus. God sent Jesus to save us from our sin. He sent Jesus to save us from the thing that would otherwise separate us from himself. Now, I want to tell you something, too. I'm not teaching and preaching just to grown folks. <laughs> this is for everybody. You know, I don't know, you young people might listen to pastor and say, you know, that just doesn't sound cool, what pastor's saying. That just doesn't, you know, hook it up or whatever their sayings are. I tell you what, you better get hooked up with Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Because what I'm telling you is what Jesus was telling us. And when he's talking about many and all these folks and all, you will be hated of all nations for his sake. Look, you young people, if you're following Jesus, you're not out of the woods. Some of you think you're iron men and iron women, wonder women and all that kind of thing, and that you're invulnerable, all right, to anything that uh, the world may throw at you. But I got news for you. I've come to tell you a thing or two, and so I, I trust that you will listen. I'm just talking about end time signs. We're going to continue in this theme for a while, and uh, so that you, the, the, the ultimate objective is to help you be able to recognize what's going on and also to encourage you to stay connected and continue in the things of God. Because as I said, even though Jesus said many, he did not say all. In all of these seemingly catastrophic situations, events, and scenarios. He said many, but he didn't say all. And he said he, and that goes for she too, <laughs> that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Praise God. Well, we have to stop right there out of time, but we'll pick it up again next time. Praise the name of Jesus and thank God for his word. You know, when you hear things like this and you want to make sure you take a good spiritual inventory, where are, you, where are you with God? You remember when God came looking for Adam? Adam, where art thou? It wasn't that God didn't know where he was geographically. The question had to do with where are you with me? 
How's your fellowship with me? How's your relationship with me? And that's what he's asking you. Maybe you're catching this program today and you say, man, I, I didn't know all that stuff was coming. I didn't know all those things were happening. It's no surprise to me. You know, if you're caught up watching all the limitless entertainment channels that there are available, I mean, all your device, they can stream everything. They can stream pictures. They can stream movies. They can stream music. There's more than enough to inundate you with things that would otherwise distract you from the things of God. And that could very well be why you don't know any more about these end time signs than you do. Amen. Praise God. I thank God because, you know, hey, we're streaming. This, this ministry is streaming. The word of God is coming across. And I do recognize and thank God for all the channels that are bringing the word, the true word and the true anointing of God. But at the same time, Jesus is warning us, hey, watch out for these false folks. Watch out for these false signs and wonders. Amen. So we, we need a word to the wise, as they say, should be sufficient. Well, look, if you don't know Jesus, if you've never asked him to come in your life and save you from your sin, let's get that taken care of right now. I wanted to encourage you to follow me in this simple prayer. So whoever you are, wherever you are, would you just take a moment, bow your head, close your eyes, and just listen closely and repeat after me this prayer from your heart to the heart of God because he's listening and he desires to hear from you. So say, dear God, in heaven, I come to you realizing that in my life I have sinned and come short of your glory. I repent of all of my sin, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who died on the cross and shed his blood to save me from all of my sin, is the Lord of my life. And I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, that I might be justified, just as if I had never sinned. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and live in me now. I believe that I receive eternal life through Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior, that I am now made a new creation in Christ, born again of the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise the Lord and congratulations to you. If you prayed that prayer, we welcome you into the family of God. You are now officially a citizen of the kingdom of God. And you always have something to look forward to and the best is yet to come. By the way, let me advise you that this Bible is your constitution as a citizen of God's kingdom, amen? It'll, it'll teach you the way that you ought to live, the way you ought to think, the way you ought to speak. I mean, it, it covers everything. And that's so very important. And what can I say? I encourage you to keep streaming in on this program because we will definitely teach you the word of God and encourage you and, and show you what Jesus has to say and what the Bible says about God, about you and the relationship that exists between the two of you. I thank God for you right now.